Hi, we're back, and we have a lovely lady that most of you will remember. She's been on the program quite a few times, and we love to have her because she's a wonderful artist and a great person. And it's Gail Daly. Thank you for having me, Carol. Gail, it's so good to have, to have you back. And I know that because look at the, she writes these wonderful books, and so many of them I, it would take me... Ten years to do what she does in a, in a couple of months. <laughs> She's fantastic. Anyway, Gail, you know, what do you got exciting for us today? Well, uh, this is my uh, newest, the newest book in the uh, uh, Space Colony Journal series. It's uh, the first time I've actually done uh, an alien person. Oh. Um, the um, the heroine, and the two heroines in this one. One of them's a teenage girl. The other one's a, a grown woman. But they're actually uh, members of a of um, another a Trelli, the Trellians, which are mm-hmm. an alien planet, alien race that's part of the Confederation that the mm-hmm. Space Family Journals is set mm-hmm. in. Um, both of these girls were adopted into the human colony on Vinsug into the Oteague clan, oh. which everybody that's read the books, you're from, you'll be familiar with them. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, oldest one, Sasuna, appeared. Uh, in the uh, book called The Designer People as a, as a teenager. Uh-huh. And uh, Selig, that's the younger girl, at that time she she also appeared in The, the Designer People, but she was much younger. Mm-hmm. She was about 12, then, and here she's 15, so oh. we've kind of grown a little bit on it. They go back to Sasuna's home planet because um, Sasuna's mother... They have property there, and she thinks something funny is going on, so she sends her daughter back because she's she can't go herself. Okay. Um, their escort is one of the Oteague uh, members. He's got a it's a Rupert, and he's also a, was also a secondary character in the other mm, other things. And okay. he uh, he appears he's there um, basically to buy plants because he has a pharmaceutical company that, oh. that, that buys and sells sells plants. But it's um, like I said, I had to start all over and I had I couldn't I had to create the new world you know which is always a really fun thing yeah. but I had to kill back and remember what I had said about that world in the other books <laughs> so that I didn't, didn't you had to read your books I had to re- <laughs> reread the books to do it so it was a lot of fun but uh the uh, this one I, I think people will enjoy it and it, it's it's fun I'm it's due to come, go to print in, in August so oh. I've got I gave myself plenty of time this time which I didn't do with this one, because I didn't realize how long the draft to digital does to get a print book out. Oh, because they're they're um, they're basically a print on demand site, mm-hmm. and they have wide distribution. Their ebooks, when you do an ebook with them, they go to to Kobo, to Amazon, to Nook, to iBooks, and a whole bunch of other Whoa. places. About twenty different publishers. That's wonderful. And they also do the the paperbacks. Will they will go to them too? And they distribute to the libraries mm-hmm. and things, so it, it's a lot of fun. But those are th- this one is number was number six, and this is the one um, that's all that's about uh, Juliet, who was the first daughter of Lady Catherine, and she she goes on this exploring expedition, mm-hmm. and she's learning to, learning about her um, the what they call the elder races who were actually around a long time. I kind of took a leaf out of Andre Norton's book and and decided <laughs> that okay. These are not the humans, and these people here, they're not the first people that came into space. There's obviously been prior civilizations. So this is basically, they're, lo- they're looking for, for this, one of those cities that's been abandoned. Oh, great. And it was a lot of, that one was a lot of fun, too. Yeah. But she's also got stuff going on at home. Um, one of her old enemies has, has come back, and he decides he wants to, t- her brothers and sisters... So he actually tries to kidnap some of them, and she and she and her <laughs> and and her boyfriend have to try and rescue them and things like that. It was just it wasn't oh, that bad. Sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, this one uh, came out uh, last October, or, or last it actually came out in January, and it is the um, second book in the um, Magi of Valeri. Oh, I like that. And one. it is pure fantasy, mm-hmm. what you call epic fantasy. Um, the humans got that went to this world through a portal, but when they got there, they found out that hey, all these laws of of nature like like physics that doesn't work so much anymore. Magic works, so they had to learn how to use the use the magic, 
And uh, it's really kind of entertaining because I, the humans built an artificial intelligence when they were there. <laughs> and the artificial intelligence all of a sudden is all these, because they had put them in these places of power, all of a sudden it's not really a mechanical thing anymore. Uh-huh. It's a got a personality. It's it those things, you know, this, this <laughs> kind of stuff. So, um, and the the um, the all the different and artificial intelligence that are located around around their settlements, well, they're uh, they're interconnected. So they never really lost touch wow. with things. So wow. um, she actually the artificial intelligence at her where her sister's um, uh, keep is sent her to to another one. To this oh. other one because it had been abandoned, didn't have anybody in control anymore. Uh-huh. So it sent her there, and it told her how to get in and all and this kind of stuff. And she wasn't really intending to stay. She was just bringing um, a little boy to his father. Mm-hmm. That's why she she went there. But all but she ended up being being oh grabbed. Guess what? You're our new boss. You have to stay. <laughs> Which was kind of fun too. But like I said, this one is is it is pure fantasy. Um, it's um I, I wanted it to be the, the 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 one the series that are fantasy. This one the Space Family Journals are kind of a hybrid of because they've got paranormal elements as well as regular. But this one is pure fantasy. This uh book I'm working on right now that I'm running right now that I've done the cover for it is book 2 in the uh St. Antonio series. And I intended for it to be without those elements of a paranormal or fantasy. Oh. So it's it's a pretty pretty much real and it it started with the with them also it, it's they went through it went through a portal. Mm-hmm. And um uh, pretty much the reason it they actually went through an illegal portal. Oh. And the reason why they were able to do that is because the technology turned out to be really cheap and really easy to, for anybody any any jack leg scientist to do. So when it was discovered, the government, of course, tried to keep it under wraps, but it leaked. People talk; they're going to gab, and all these little, these portals to these places sprung up all over everywhere. Wow. And now some of those places that they went to really weren't suited for human habitation, and, and the the, the uh, they failed. Oh. But now the the world of San Antonio, they happened to get really lucky with that. It, it's pretty sim. It was similar enough to Earth that it. The plants would grow there. The animals would grow. The people could thrive there. Mm-hmm. So when they snuck through it, they got really lucky. But they didn't have. They couldn't take any technology with them. Mm. So it's a frontier planet, and I, um, I drew very heavily on the Western genre for the action mm-hmm. sequences because yeah. people there, um, they're spread out. The law or what little government there is, and their law there, they're just. They're too far away to really do anything to help you. You pretty much have to, you're stuck with yeah, doing it yourself. Yeah. And the um, technology I set in about the, in the Victorian area era because it was steam engine. It was steam engines and things. So they yeah. and they knew all these things existed. And of course, they do have these what they call portal run, runners who sneak back and forth to Earth and bring things in, smuggle things in. <laughs> and if they get caught over on Earth trying to snuggle back, well then. They're going to get put in jail, so it's it's not really a safe, sta- safe thing. And I intend to do one of the later books. I intended to, to use one of the portal runners at, do it as a um, main character, but that that's not this one. This one is actually another cozy mystery. Um, the uh, gal on here, her mother had been trained uh, on Earth as a, as a, a spy and an assassin. Only she got into trouble with her own agency. Because uh, they told her to kill somebody, and she didn't want to kill him because she was in love with him. Oh. So uh, she, uh, she and her baby daughter, they fled. They fled through the portal. The guy was supposed to follow him, but he never made it. But here they are. They're stuck on this world. She has no marketing skills except how to spy and kill people. The mom doesn't. So mm-hmm. that's what she, she sets herself up. That's how she she starts making a living. Um, and she taught the daughter that. Uh, when when she got when the mom got killed, when the girl was about fourteen, the girl finished the contract, and then she started. She got connected with uh, something that's on this planet called the Women's Circle, mm-hmm. which is basically the women kind of band together and, and help each other. That would be a change. Yes, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, 
she um it got to be too hot in the city where she was living so they'd send her to someplace else and she's uh traveling with an with a an older woman that's a uh, member that's actually one of the founding mothers of the women's circle. Mm-hmm. So um, they go to this this one place, and she um, tells Chloe as a cover. Chloe is uh, a, a an herbologist. She makes mm-hmm. medicines and creams right. and stuff like that. But she really also on the side she does this investigating. Wow! So that when they get there, um, they um, the ca- first case that she gets is um, the, the, someone wants to thinks that their their brother-in-law is abusing their niece Mm -hmm. so they ask her to investigate it when she gets there the guy's dead (laughs) Mm -hmm. somebody killed him you know so she's kind of sitting there looking at it when the sheriff shows up (laughs) and uh the sheriff is not he's not alone he's got another man with him and the other man is um the is what they call an enforcer from the city states the city states all the little little cities around are kind of banded have kind of banded together mm-hmm. because they didn't they wanted they needed they knew they needed an enforcement agency like the texas rangers that would, yeah. would cross the borders <laughs> so that's what he what he works for and he thinks the whole thing's hokey <laughs> you know anyway he doesn't he doesn't trust her and they they kind of go back and back and forth before they try they finally start working together and figure out who actually did did the murder oh boy but uh, I, it's i don't know how you remember all this it's just uh, you <laughs> Where do these characters come from? Do they are they the easy? They just come and then you know re- recognize. Oh, that's a character. Uh, actually, uh, you have. To, I just really concentrate on the character. Um, the um, the storyline itself, I get from everywhere. I watch a lot of TV. I read a lot of books, and sometimes I'll think, well, you know, what would happen if that person was in this type of situation? Yeah. You know, and then I think, okay, I yeah, that that might work. I could put that person there. Great idea. You know, but um, for the the enforcers, I'm doing a lot of research on the internet for what um, uh, arsenic and hemlock poisoning lo- actually looks like when someone's is done. And I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I hope nobody ever, hope nobody close to me dies, so people don't think <laughs> they don't come look at me and see that say I've been doing all this research, but. Um, it, it's fun. Uh, the um, the books are available. Uh, like it's all all three of the uh, of the, the or the first Magic Storm and Alien Trails will be are out now, and they're Good. they're uh, they're available on on either on my website or you can just go to to um, Amazon dot com or Kobo mm-hmm. or Nook or whatever yeah. and, and pull up the the title and they'll be there. Okay. Um, oh, I'm so glad you yeah. came in because these are so many new ones from the last time you were here. With so many new books, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, Quantum Light um, is is actually in production right now. It, it has a, it'll go it'll be available in August, and the Enforcers I'm still writing, so it's not quite finished yet. <laughs> oh, okay, honey, thank you so much. I'm so glad you came in again. Well, thank you for having and me. And please come in with more books because I just I love the uh, the other other world stuff about them. Uh, well, I tell really you what, good. I like I say these are just mo- these um, these two are just mock-ups, but these two I brought for you. You did? Oh, I, this especially I want to read Magic Magic Storm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's especially yes. And the Alien Trails. Thank you so much. You're, you're such a wonderful friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, honey, and do come again, right? I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you next Thursday.